Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to crochet a cardigan for your stuffed animal. I'd say this is a beginner friendly tutorial. This video is going to be longer than most of my videos because I really tried to go slow and make this really detailed. Now let's get started! Okay, to get started the first thing I'm going to do is grab my stuffed animal. You can make this for any size stuffed animal because the pattern's basically adjusted based off of your stuffed animal's measurements. And I'm going to make this for Coco here, my build bear She's a pretty standard size. And now I'm going to basically measure around her chest. Okay, I'm going to switch it up a little bit and measure in centimeters for this video, <gasps> only because I adapted this off of a full-sized cardigan tutorial, and the person I watched used centimeters, so I'll link her original video down below, but I'm going to go with centimeters just so I don't mess anything up majorly. Okay, so around her body, she is 38 centimeters. So I'm going to just make a mental note of that, and now I can grab my yarn. I'm going to use this thinner yarn since I learned my lesson from constantly using those super chunky yarns. It just sometimes ends up too chunky and not as form-fitted as I'd want it, so I'm going to use the same size one I used in my blanket video, but you can really use any kind that you want. And of course, I'll need a crochet hook that matches this size, so I don't know exactly what size. Oh, this is 3.75 millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to start by wrapping the end of my yarn around my finger three times and then holding that end. I'm going to pull the middle one over the first one, just like that. And then I'm going to pull this new middle one over my finger. So this first loop wasn't really necessary, but now this will create the slip knot and I can adjust it to fit my crochet hook. So I'm going to pull this pretty tight. As you can see, there's still like a hole there. It's not super tight. And now to just make this easier to hold, I'm going to loop the yarn around my fingers like this. Now that I'm ready to go, I can start chaining. So to chain one, I'm just going to wrap my crochet hook around the yarn. This is what's called the working yarn that's connected to the ball. So wrap it around and then pull it through the loop. So that is one. And I forgot to mention the way to hold your hook should not be like a pencil like this, which I used to do in some videos. The correct way to do it is kind of closer to the bottom and with like one finger out like this. So this this should be the shape of your hand, basically. So I think that just makes it so your hand doesn't hurt as easily. Okay, then I'm gonna chain another one. So wrapping this around my hook and then pulling through. And I'm trying to keep it pretty loose, not, not super tight like this, but we're eventually gonna have to go into these stitches so we don't want it too tight. So now I'm gonna continue doing that to create the chain. I'd say this cardigan is easier to do than my crochet sweater video since that had a few more different stitches. This really only has one or two, so I really tried to keep the pattern simple. Okay, so I've been talking a lot, but I've not mentioned when to stop this, so now's a good time. You don't need to count any of the stitches or anything, you mainly just need to measure how long it is. So first you want to remember the measurement you took around their chest. So for her it was 38 centimeters. And then you'll want to add 6 centimeters to that so it doesn't end up too tight. So 38 plus 6 is 44. Yes, it's 44. And so now you want to divide that number by 2. So 44 divided by 2 is 22. And that is how long you want your chain to be. So I'm going to measure mine really quick. Basically at 23, so I'm going to just get rid of two stitches. So I think that is good. I can move on to the next step, which is to chain one. And now I'm going to do a half double crochet. So to do that, I'm first going to yarn over. So wrap the yarn around my hook, and then I'm going to go into not the stitch I'm currently in, but I'm going to go into the next stitch. So that's this one. And if you look at these as kind of V's, I basically just want to go into the top loop. And so now I should have three loops on my hook. And now I'm going to pull through the first one and then pull through all three. So that is a half double crochet. And so now I'm going to do the same thing into the next stitch. So yarn over. And so this is the one I just went into. So I'm going to go into this next one, then pull through that first loop. Then once I have three loops, I can pull through all three. And now I'm going to continue doing that. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, 
pull through and then pull through three. Okay, I'm getting towards the end of this row. I have one left and the slip knot at the end is just the slip knot, so that's not a stitch to go into. And okay, never mind. I guess that was my last stitch. Okay, now I'm going to chain one and then flip this over. And now I'm going to do the same process again. So make sure that when you go into the next stitch, you're going into that first half double crochet. So as you can see, there's like a little hole there. That's the chain we just did but you don't want to go in there because that'll increase the stitch and make it get a little bit bigger, which I feel like I've done in the past. So I'm going to make sure to go into this next stitch. So yarn over, go through there, and then pull through three. And now I'm going to keep doing this in every stitch of this row. We're just going to be doing this stitch repeatedly for basically the rest of this cardigan, but for now we're making the back panel, so this is going to be a long rectangle, so you're just going to have to do this for a while, so maybe put on a show and just relax and get some crocheting done. I also forgot to point out that when you're going through that half double crochet, it's going to be two loops at the top, so it's going to look like a chain from the top, and you'll want to go into both of those stitches, so... As you can see from the top, I'm going through both, and then pulling through, and then pulling through all three. Just wanted to point that out before I kept going. Okay, so I'm almost to the end of the round. I just have two more to do. And this last one can be a little bit tricky. I'm still going to go into this stitch right here, because it does look... Like it's sticking out kind of a lot. So I'm gonna yarn over, go into both loops, and then pull through that one, and then pull through all three. And that definitely looks straight now, so that's how I know I did it right. Okay, so now I'm gonna just keep going with the next row, chain one, flip it, and then do a half double crochet into this next stitch. And now I'm just going to keep doing these same steps, doing each row with half double crochets until this is as long as I want the cardigan to be. So I haven't measured on my stuffed animal how long I want it to be, but I think I'm just going to keep going and check as I go. But I'll make sure to show how it looks compared to my stuffed animal when I'm done. Okay, I'm getting towards the end of my 11th round. I think this is going to be my last round. So now going into that last stitch that is kind of leaning to the side to close it off. Okay, so now I'm going to loosen this really quick just so I can check how it looks compared to my stuffed animal. So I realized that this is a little longer than... I intended so when I measured this I probably should have stretched it out just a little bit to get a more accurate measurement because this did lengthen maybe a few centimeters more than I thought but you basically want it long enough to go from their neck they don't really have a neck though so just up here and then this will just be how long it is so that's pretty long already I usually end up making mine too long so I don't want it too long this time so now that is the end of this piece so I'm going to just really quick chain one then cut my yarn you don't have to leave a lot of extra for this one and then i'm going to just pull it through and then pull that really tight and there it is so this is going to be the back of the cardigan and now i'm going to move on to making the front panels okay before starting the next piece i need to take one more measurement and that's going to be for her neck so i'm not going to wrap it around i'm just going to have it flat and her neck is about eight centimeters wide so that's how much of a gap I want to make sure to leave in the middle. Okay, since I want to leave an 8 centimeter space in the middle, 
I'm going to take this overall measurement because it did end up bigger than I planned. So that's this is 28 centimeters long. If I subtract 8 from that, that is 20. And then 20 divided by 2 is 10 because there's going to be two panels. So when I'm making this piece, I want the initial chain to be 10 centimeters long. So I'm going to start that really quick. Okay, so let's do this uh, slip knot again. Then over twice. Okay, so now I'm going to chain until it is 10 centimeters long. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is long enough, but now to get the exact measurement. Okay, voice over me jumping in for this part. So I was talking way too much and it was kind of confusing. So, so all you need to know is when taking this measurement, make sure to just stretch out your chain a little bit because it will kind of stretch out later. And it might help to compare it to your back piece and just imagine having two of these. So make sure you have enough space in the middle for your stuffed animal's neck. I honestly think it's better to have too much space in the middle than not enough because you can always extend the sides later like I had to do. Okay, back to me talking in real time. Basically do the same process with the half double crochets as before. So I'm going to chain one more and then into this next one, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, pull through that first one, and then pull through all three. Then keep repeating that, this one into the next stitch. And now I'm doing the same process as before, making a rectangle, and I obviously want it the same length as before. So I think I did 11 rows for that first one, so I'm going to keep it consistent and do 11 rows for this one. But I'll be back when I'm done with these 11 rows. Okay, I'm getting towards the end of the 11th round, same amount as I did for the back piece. Okay, so now I'm going to chain one, and I'll bring in this piece just to prove they are the same. Okay, that looks good. And I measured as I went, so this is a little bit more than 10 centimeters. For this one, you'll want to leave a really long tail, probably at least a foot. I probably won't need that much, but I, you do need a lot for this part. Okay, so then I can pull this through and then tighten it. Now I need to do the exact same thing for this piece, and since this did end up being really close to 10 centimeters, I'm going to do the same amount of stitches for the other side. So counting from here, that's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, maybe 15, but I'll, I'll also count the top. 1, 2, 3. Okay, I think it's 14, so for the next one I'm going to chain 14 and do the same thing as I did for this part. Okay, I finished the other one, and here is how it looked. And now I need to connect these pieces at the shoulder. So I have the side with the really long tail, and that's going to be the top part. And you want to flip these pieces good side to good side. So both the pieces should look the same on both sides, but if you have a side you prefer, you'll want to put that on the inside. But I don't really care, so I'm just going to flip them together. And the bottoms kind of match up like this, which is good. Oh, this is actually the bottom. So I'm going to flip it so like this. I'm basically going to use this yarn as the working yarn to crochet these two pieces together. So since you're supposed to crochet right to left, I'm going to have to flip this over. I'm going to line up the edges and then along this top piece, I'm going to go through both loops and then wrap the yarn around my hook and pull it through both. And I can wrap the rest around my fingers like usual. And now I'm just going to do a slip stitch into both of these. So after I have one loop on my hook like this, I'm going to go through the next two loops. So it's two sets of two loops, then pull it through there, and then also pull it through the loop that was originally on my hook, like that. So now I'm going to go into the next one, so I can see this one is what I just went into, so I'm going to go into this next set, pull through that, and that first one. And now I'm going to keep doing this until I get to the end. Okay, I'm getting towards the end and I guess I left my yarn just long enough because it is getting very short so it can get kind of tricky at the end. But I think I have one more to do, just this last one. So I'm going to pull through both of those and then I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to chain one and then pull it through and then pull it tight. And so now when you flip it like this, they will be connected at the top just like that.
So now I'm going to do the same thing for the other panel. Okay, here is how it looks when it's done. When I tried this on, there is um, a few a few problems, but I'm not going to get into all of them right now. If it goes over like this, and this is the shoulder, it looks pretty short. So I'd recommend maybe doing one or two rows more than you think. But now, um, not really addressing... But now I'm going to get into joining the sides of the cardigan. And I know these look like sleeves because they're so long, but I will end up making the sleeves a little bit longer because this technically should be the shoulder, but stuffed animals have very small shoulders, so I didn't think about that. But I'm just going to keep going and hopefully I can fix this. But so next I'm going to connect the sides, making sure to leave an armhole. So I think I'm going to just do three. That's not very many, but I don't want it to be too tight around the arms, so I'm just going to join it with two, three rows. So honestly, I probably could use this because it's so short. But if you don't have a tail that is long enough because you're going up further, you can just tie a loose end from the main yarn and then start working like how I will. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure this is turned wrong side out so you can see the seam up here. So this is the wrong side. And so now I'm going to basically flip it so the string is on the back and then I'm going to pull it through to make a loop. And then same thing I did for connecting the top part. I'm gonna go into every stitch, both of them, and then do a slip stitch. So pull that loop through that first one. So I'm pretty sure that's one, that's one row, I mean. And if the sides are a little bit messy like mine, like you can't exactly tell what each row is at the very edges, then just go into whatever ones you can and match them up. So that was my third. I'm gonna try this. Okay, I honestly think that's good. Yeah, so I barely went up at all, but that's just how it's gonna have to be because we need space for the armhole. Okay, now I'm just gonna pull that through and then tighten this. Okay, so that joined the sides, and so now I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. Okay, next I'm going to turn this inside out. Now I'm gonna extend the sleeves. It already looks like there's sleeves, but there technically isn't sleeves yet. So to do that, another way instead of just tying like a knot at the bottom of this is to first make a slip knot. So put this on your hook and then go into the armpit. So really any of these stitches and then pull through the working yarn and pull through the slip knot. And now I'm gonna do a half double crochet in each of these stitches. So with the edges, it is kind of hard to tell like exactly where the next one is, but you'll just wanna try to get them as evenly spaced as possible. And when in doubt, it's okay to make a few extra stitches. Like if you accidentally do two in one, that's okay. Okay, to do my first half double crochet, I'll yarn over, go through here, then pull through these three, then this next one. Yeah, it's honestly kind of tricky for me to tell which one's the next one, but I'm gonna keep going. And if I look at it in the end and it like looks like it got tighter, I can just uh, redo this row, but I'm gonna keep going into these bigger holes. So really just find a pattern and uh, keep going with it. And that means the stitches will probably be pretty evenly spaced. Okay, so I think I just have a few more. And this is my slip knot right here. So I have one more. You wanna make sure you do the half double crochet in that first stitch. So as you can see, this is where I initially inserted my hook like this. So this slip knot is connected to this stitch. So you wanna make sure you do the half double crochet in that. And then after you do that, then you can go into the one where the knot seems closest and then just do a slip stitch like that. Okay, now I'm going to chain one and turn this around. So now I'm going in the opposite direction. And now I'm gonna do a half double crochet into this next one. After I, now that I have that started at least, I'm gonna compare this to my stuffed animal and just see, okay, yeah, I'll do one more row so it looks like more of a sleeve. Okay, so I actually retried this on on my stuffed animal and realized I could fit one more row. So I finished up that last row and am on to the third one. And I think this is gonna be my last one. So I have a few more to do. I think this is the last one I have to do. And then I can slip stitch into this one. Okay, so now I'm gonna chain one and then cut this off. 
So there is the very short sleeve done. And if you find that it's getting like a little bit too tapered, you can just do two stitches in one, which I did a few times because it was starting to, you know, taper a little too much for me. Okay, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing for this side. Okay, so after doing the other sleeve, here is how it looks on my stuffed animal. And it's not looking bad, but it's not looking good either. So basically I just wanna give it more coverage in the front so it's not so open like this. Off camera, I'm actually going to experiment with this on the first side and if it works, I'm gonna show you how to do it on the other side. The first thing I wanna do actually is see where I want to start extending the sides. I want it to start maybe like right here, so this section right here, and I'm going to use a stitch marker or just a safety pin to mark that. So I'm gonna just do one side first. Okay, so after some experimenting, this is what I came up with, and I think it actually looks really good. It looks a lot more like a cardigan now, but now I need to do the same thing on the other side, and I'm gonna hopefully be able to show you what I did here. I'm going to bring my stitch marker back in, and maybe right here is where I want it to kind of taper. The first thing I'm gonna do, like always, is do a slip stitch. I'm gonna pull it in through this very bottom loop and then pull it through this loop also. Now I'm going to do a double crochet into these edges. We've been doing half double crochets, but this time we're gonna do full double crochets. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm gonna double crochet in this first stitch just so there isn't like an opening at the bottom. So after I've pulled it through that first loop, I have the three loops on my hook and now I'm gonna pull through but just the first two loops and then the last and the last two. So now I'm gonna do that into the next stitch. Through the first two, then the last two. And with the edge, it is tricky, again, to know exactly where to go, but I'm gonna go into these bigger spaces. Just try to keep it as even as possible. Okay, once I'm about three stitches away from that stitch marker, I'm going to stop doing double crochets and into the next stitch, I'm gonna just do a half double crochet. So pulling it through that first one and then pulling through all three. And then in the next one, I'm gonna do just a single crochet. So I'm not gonna yarn over, I'm just gonna go into this stitch, pull through, and then pull through these two loops, just like that. And so this is gonna start tapering the end off. The stitch marker kind of gets in the way, so I'll remove that. Then in the final one, I'm just gonna do a slip stitch. So I'm gonna just pull through both of those loops, just like that. And then I'm gonna do one more slip stitch just to really taper it. Okay, now I'm going to chain one, then turn this, and then do something similar on the way back. So first into this next one, so not the one I'm currently working in. I'm gonna do a single crochet, so just like that. Then in the next one, I'm going to do a half double crochet, so I'm gonna yarn over first, pull through, and then go through all three loops. And then I'm gonna continue just doing double crochets for the rest of the row. And this part should be easier to see which stitches you're going into exactly, since they're not edges. Okay, so I have one more down there just because it kind of looks like it's sticking out. So I'm gonna just go into a random one down there. And there it is. So, oh, okay, looks pretty even, honestly. Forgot to chain one really quick and then cut the end. And there are a lot of ends, so that makes it a little bit messy, but we'll weave those in at the end. Okay, now the last thing I'm gonna do for this is extend this bottom edge a little bit so before I do that, I have a lot of ends sticking out along the bottom and to keep me from getting like distracted by them, I'm gonna just pull them up through here just so they're not in the way too much. Who knows if this will make a difference or if I'll still be confused. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and connect my yarn like usual. So I'm gonna insert my hook into this very edge, this very corner, and then pull through that loop. And now I can start doing a double crochet in each stitch. So just like I did for the side. So yarn over, insert the hook, pull through. Now you have three, then pull through the first two, 
and then pull through the last two. And the bottom edge can be tricky, so I like to think of it as, this is kind of half a chain sticking out, so I'm probably only going to be going through this like bottom loop. But for the very beginning, you're working into what was that double crochet along the side, so it's going to be a little bit different. But you can just put stitches evenly through there the best that you can. Okay, from here it should be pretty consistent. So yeah, I'm going through really just this top loop, and I think this was the original chain that started it all. But yeah, so I'm just gonna go all the way around till I reach the other side. Here's how it looks after going all the way around, but I'm gonna try this on real quick because I could do another round if I want to make it longer. I honestly think this is good because I don't want it too long. Okay, let's finish this up then. The last thing to do is to weave in the ends, but I have to finish this end really quick. Okay, now I'm going to finally weave in all my ends. Now you can use a crochet hook for this, but to make it a little more secure, you can also use a crochet needle like this. It's just a really big plastic needle. I'll start with this one, why not? So I'll just put it in there. Oh, this is called a yarn needle, I'm pretty sure. I forgot what it's called. Okay, so now I'm gonna just, I'm gonna try to do like a wavy form. So I'm gonna go basically through the middle of the stitches a little bit and I'll go up. I'm gonna try to do like a Z or a snake, I don't know. So I'm just going up and down and see how this really gets it in the middle of all the stitches. So it's a little bit less likely to get loose than if you just used like a crochet hook. As the end get, keeps getting stuck, you'll have to make it shorter, but then you can cut any extra off. Go back in through here and then I'll just cut it really close like that. Okay, hopefully that is in there. And now I'm gonna keep doing that for all of them. And I have a lot, so this is gonna take kind of a while. Okay, here is how it looks once everything was weaved in. And I feel like it wouldn't be one of my crochet projects if it wasn't way too wide. But I mean, it looks cute. It looks like, wow, this is a very short cardigan for a very wide stuffed animal, and that's okay. But let's try this on. And really the main part I need to work on is um, tucking the armpit in a little bit so it doesn't stick out as much. But I think that's gonna be it for this video. I'll make sure to leave a full written pattern in the description box. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, comment any video requests you have down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Bye! Got me thinking that this can all be true Speculating A long time waiting to Hear a word back from you Conversation in my head Got me conflict The first thing I want to actually do is Measure <laughs> the, the, the first The white side of us European What? Is the white of us European? Yes that's what white well, is. Well, other than...